Greetings everyone. Today we're going to explore graphing polynomials. Now we do have several handouts and we do need our calculator. So please make sure you have those supplies ready before you get going. The first thing I want to do is not in your notes. I just want to take some time to investigate the following functions and talk about their key features that we've talked about all year. The difference now is what happens when it's a higher degree? What does the end behavior look like? What's the highest exponent mean? So follow along. If you want to also practice plugging these into your calculator, please pause when needed. The first function we're going to look at has a degree of 3. Remember your degree is your highest exponent. So if I take a look, the general shape of a cubic function is an S-curve. If I take a look, I see that I only have one x-intercept, which means I'm going to have two imaginary solutions. The number of times it turns, it changes direction here and direction here, which means I took that degree of 3 and I subtracted 1 to get 2 turns. The end behavior, it goes down to the left, up to the right. So there are opposite directions because I have an odd degree. Leading coefficient, the leading coefficient is 1. So there's nothing, let's see, too crazy, right? I can see the perfect turns. There's nothing out of the ordinary other than the fact that there's going to be imaginary answers. Well, if you think about those imaginary answers, let's talk about that again. I change direction here. If this would have swooped down further, I would have had my other two visible solutions. But because it changes direction above the x-axis, it creates my imaginary solutions. Let's take a look at this one. We have a degree of 4. That's an even degree. And so the general shape of a fourth degree polynomial tends to be a W shape. Now you'll notice this W is a little different. I see that I only have two visible x-intercepts, which means I'm going to have two imaginary. That's based on our previous lessons. If I take a look, it looks like it only turns once. But according to my degree, if I have a degree of 4 and I subtract 1, I should see three turns. So this sort of little curve or change in the function right there actually counts as some turns. We'll talk about that a little more. End behavior. I have a positive function. The leading coefficient's positive, and it's even, so they're both going up. Kind of like when we had x squared, right? That meant a u up. Negative x squared meant a u down. So positive x to the fourth means w up. Negative x to the fourth means w down. My leading coefficient on this one is 1, which isn't too crazy. So what's making this piece here this weird curve? Well, look at all of the additional information I have in the middle. I've got an x cubed squared and an x. When there's more information, my function is more unique. Take a look at this one. I have a degree of 3, so it's an S-curve. The general shape, I can see that it's clearly got that S-curve shape to it. I only see one x-intercept, but I'm going to have three solutions. So that means there's going to be two imaginary. The number of times it turns, I mentioned this before, it should be 3 minus 1. I should see it turn twice. So my S-curve here isn't prominent. It's more of just a slight S-curve. 
My end behavior, you'll notice I go up to the left and down to the right. So in general, if I trace it, I am decreasing. That's because my leading coefficient's negative. So if it's a positive x cubed, it increases. If it's a negative x cubed, it decreases. My leading coefficient's a negative three. So again, normally, if we have a leading coefficient greater than one, think of how that affected x squareds, versus if I have a fraction, how that affects things. Now these are all just patterns. This isn't stuff that you have to memorize. It's just general ideas and patterns that we're gonna start to notice and it'll make things a little easier. Let's try another one. My degree is to the fourth power um, and it's a negative leading coefficient, which means fourth degree and negative should be an upside down W. And it makes sense. My end behavior, they're both going down. As for the W, I've kind of got this weird curve in there again, right? The number of times it turns, it should be four minus one. I should see it turn three times, but again, this weird curve in the middle. It almost looks like I have a cubic or an S function in the middle. I only see two x-intercepts, which means I'm going to have two imaginary answers. Let's try going up to a fifth degree. Five is odd, and my leading coefficient's positive. So remember, x cubed positive was an increasing s-curve. Notice x to the fifth in general is also an s-curve increasing over time. I only see one x-intercept. That means I'm going to have four imaginary answers. I see that it turns twice. Well, if I take 5 minus 1, I should see four turns. That means there's some kind of weird curve here in the middle again. The leading coefficient's 1. So I don't see anything too crazy except for that curvature in the middle. Let's go up one more degree. Let's try to the sixth power. All right, so negative leading coefficient even. A negative x squared was a downwards u, right? A negative x to the fourth was a downwards w. So a negative x to the sixth, you'll notice is some kind of weirdness in the middle but still both going down in the end for my end behavior. The general shape, I mean, everything stems back to that U. It's just what's going on in the middle that determines the middle. You'll notice I only have two visible x-intercepts. That means I'm going to have four imaginary answers. As for the number of times it turns, I mean, we see this definite turn here, but then I have, again, this odd behavior in the middle. All right, let's take some of those generalizations and turn them into rules, to notes that we can follow for all functions. So you do have this notes sheet provided. Let's talk about the first option. If I have an even degree, two, four, six, right? And I have a positive leading coefficient. Doesn't matter the number, I just care that it's positive, okay? Then that means my end behavior, they're both going to be increasing, positive, positive. Now, the stuff in the middle could be anything, right? As we've just realized, it could be a W, it could look like it has an S curve, that doesn't matter right now. We just are worrying about the end behavior. All right, let's try the next option. If I'm talking about an even degree, two, four, six, but I have a negative leading coefficient, 
Well, that would look like a downwards U or a downwards W or a downwards whatever that mess is. So we are going in the negative direction. We are decreasing on both. Let's talk about an odd degree. If I have an odd degree with a positive leading coefficient, like a positive x cubed, x to the fifth, or x, right? One is odd. That would be a positive line, a positive s, a positive crazy stuff in the middle. In that case, the left side is going to negative infinity and the right side is going to positive infinity. And then again, the stuff in the middle could look any which way depending on the function. All right, let's try the last one. If I am talking about a odd degree and a negative leading coefficient, negative x to the first, negative x cubed, negative x to the fifth, that's a decreasing line, that's a decreasing s. Okay. So what that means is on the left side, I'm going to positive infinity as I go left. On the right side, I'm going down to negative infinity. Now for me, I'm visual, so the graphic makes a little more sense. And then I can imagine what might be in the middle. So what's going to happen is how this helps is if I give you a function and I do not use a calculator, you can at least draw the ends of the function without any technology. But let's talk about the technology piece. You do have this note sheet and what this note sheet does is it provides you the steps to finding the changes in direction, the points that I have for a local max or a local min. So these are the directions. We will go over these. Um, if the title page is wrong and you fold it like a book, you might need to retitle it. So please make sure you have that in front of you during this process. Alrighty, at this point we are going to use our technology, so you'll want to have your graphing calculator ready and we're going to go through the steps of how to type this in and how to use that little cheat sheet for the steps for the maximum and minimum. So we're going to start by going to y equals as before, as we've been doing. We're going to type in the function x to the third, subtract 4x squared, make sure you use the subtract and not the negative button, subtract. 9x and plus 36. Always make sure that your function is typed correctly before you click the graph button. Now I know that this is a positive odd function, so I'm increasing in general from left to right. Um, you'll notice that I'm not seeing the actual maximum. Right? But let's review what we do know. We do know we can find our zero. So I'm going to trace three, enter, that's a zero. I'm going to trace four, that's a zero. And I'm going to trace negative three, and that's a zero. So with a degree of three, I have three clean integer solutions, which means this is factorable as well. But what I want to practice is let's zoom out so we can see that maximum. So I'm going to go zoom and I'm going to zoom out, enter. Now that cursor is saying, where do you want to zoom out from? I prefer to zoom out from the origin. So I'm going to move my cursor to the origin and then press enter. Oop, I zoomed out too much. Let me click zoom. I'm going to click zoom in, enter. Now some of you might not like that view, right? Another option is to go to window and window is your constraints. So you'll notice it was really, really skinny. I don't need all those X values. So for my minimum X, I'm going to keep it negative 10. And for my maximum X, I'm going to keep it 10 as well. Now, if I press graph again, now I can see things just a little bit better, right? And you'll notice my maximum still can't quite see it. So I'm going to go back to window. And I'm going to make my y maximum, let's do 45. 
And my y minimum, I don't need that much. Let's actually make that a negative, I could see it with a negative 10. Right, so you can mess with the x min-max and the y min-max. Now when I press graph, I can clearly see all of the details. Let's use that little note sheet more specifically now. I want to know the exact value of that local maximum. So I'm going to press follow along on the note sheet. Second trace, which is the calc function. You'll notice it says calc. We're going to click our cursor and go down to maximum. Enter. Now, the cursor is blinking and it says left bound question mark we need to press our cursor and we want to go to the left of our maximum. Press enter. Now the calculator says right bound. We want to press our cursor until we're somewhere, anywhere to the right of that maximum. Press enter. The next option is guess. If you want to put the cursor where you think it is, great, but you actually don't need to do anything special here. You can just press enter. Now you'll notice that it provided us with our exact maximum. Now pay attention to directions if you're asked to type, or excuse me, to write your max and mins to so many decimals. You'll never need all of the decimals, but you might need to round just a little bit. Next, I'm going to repeat this process for the minimum. So let's go through the steps again. Second, trace. This time I'm selecting minimum. Enter. The calculator asks me to go to the left of my minimum. Press enter. The calculator asks me to go to the right of my minimum. Press enter. The calculator asks if I want to guess. I don't want to, so I'm going to press enter. I now have my minimum with an extended decimal value. Pay attention to the rounding requests. All right, now that we have this in our calculator, we can start to answer our questions and we can create our own graph. Now, because uh, physically I'm going to give you a 10 by 10 graph, um, what we really want to pay attention to is specifically plotting our zeros correctly, especially since they were clean. If they're not integers, you're just going to estimate. From those intercepts, from those solutions, my end behavior can be kind of generic, right? Um, the other thing we can do is actually plot our max and mins. So my max was three something, one something. So I can actually just put that in the middle of the square and connect those dots. Now my maximum was ridiculous, right? It was over 40. So just go off the graph a little bit. You'll identify that number later. And so just go off that graph and then connect. All right, I'm going to know what you mean by going off the graph when you identify the key features. So let's identify those key features. My degree is three, which means I have three possible solutions. The max number of turning points is your degree subtract one. So my maximum number of turning points is two. And as we know from our explanation, it's often less. Even, odd, or neither, definitely neither. There is no symmetry to this anywhere. Increasing, decreasing. Let's start with increasing. I am increasing from negative infinity to the x value of my maximum, which was negative 0.85. So you can look at your calculator again. Then I was also increasing from the x value of my minimum, which was about 3.5, all the way to infinity. Decreasing. I am decreasing 
between those two x values, between my maximum and my minimum. So here's where I want to see those exact values. End behavior. It's a positive odd function. As x approaches infinity, y approached infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, or as I go left, y approaches negative infinity. That's where that end behavior note sheet will help. Let's keep going. You have the graph in front of you, um, but let's identify the y-intercept. You can use your calculator to find this, but we've been doing this. If you plug in zero for all of the x's, right, you have the constant remaining. So that's pretty easy to just look at your function and know what your y-intercept is. But you can double check on your calculator. Our x-intercepts, we have an x-intercept of negative 3, 0, 3, 0, and of 4, 0. Now, if they are integers, I should see some, just a little bit of work, okay? For example, I know that this could factor because they're all clean integers. If they're not, just as we've done before, I want to see just a little bit of work, right? I want to see maybe the synthetic division, okay? Um, I need to see something though, all right? So this breaks down to x squared minus 9 x minus 4, this factors again, plus 3 minus 3, right? We're just showing the proof of why those zeros are the way they are, just as we did with our previous assignments. So in this box, if there's imaginaries, I should see you breaking down using synthetic and then solving, right? So that box will always be big because I need to see the work to go with your zeros. Domain and range, because this is an odd function, I'm going forever in every direction. Extreme, local, and absolute. So here's where we have our local max and min. Let's say for our local max, um, again, we might change, but let's go to two decimals for right now. My local max, according to my calculator, was negative 0.85 comma 40.15. I'm going to round that to a 5. My local min that I found on my calculator was 3.52 if I round, comma negative 1.63 if I round. We have no absolute because it goes forever in both directions. Continuous, yeah, it's continuous. And boundedness, there is no boundedness. Oops, let's just say no boundedness. Um, because again, it's an odd function. I'm going forever in every direction. Let's explore one more example. You do not have a note sheet for this, so it's up to you uh, if you want to jot it down. Um, but let's start off with typing it into our calculator. I see as I do this that I have an even degree and it's positive. So end behavior wise, I know both ends are going to go up to positive infinity. There we go. Again, make sure it's typed in correctly. Now it looks like I could factor this, so this should be interesting. Let's press graph. And if your window is weird because of your previous function, I'm going to click zoom and I'm going to go to standard. Let's try that 10 by 10 window. And that 10 by 10 window is perfect. Um, let's do some tracing. I'm going to trace, um, let's do negative 1 it looks like possibly. Yep. Let's trace negative 2. Perfect. Let's trace 2. Looks good. So I have a degree of 4 and I have found 3 of my zeros. All right, let's keep this graph ready and let's find our maximums and minimums as well. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, second trace. I'm going to find the first minimum. 
it says left bound. I've got a ways to go. I'm going to go to the left of that first minimum, enter. Right bound, go to the right of that minimum. I don't need to guess, press enter. So my first minimum, it looks like is negative 1.61. I'm going to round right away and negative 1.38. All right, let's go again. Second trace. This time I'm going to find the maximum since it's next. We're going to go left of that top of the mountain, that maximum, press enter. Go to the right of that maximum, press enter. I don't want to guess, press enter. And my local maximum shows up as negative 0.47. I'm going to round, comma, 0.94. One more. Second, trace. We're going to look for the next minimum. Enter. Let's go to the left of that bottom. Enter. Go to the right of that minimum. Enter. I don't want to guess. Enter. And I have another minimum at, let's see, 1.33. I'm going to round, comma, negative 6.91. Alrighty, so let's take the information that we know and let's answer, answer some key features. Alright, so let's answer those key feature questions. I have a degree of four, which means there's four possible zeros. And the maximum number of turning points is always the degree subtract one, so I could turn three times. And this is a perfect example of that. Now, don't base it on how many you see. We're saying there's a maximum option of three. End behavior. This is a even degree positive. So as X approaches infinity, oops, there goes my pen, Y approaches infinity. As X approaches negative infinity, Y still approaches infinity, meaning we're going up at both ends. Um, y intercept, I'm going to answer that next because that's really quick. We're going through the origin since we don't have a constant. Um, I'm going to jump up to domain and range. I'm going forever left and forever right for my domain. But for my range, I do have an absolute minimum. I need to use that decimal value that I found on my minimum, which was negative 6.91, and I'm forever increasing. So there's the first thing we really need to keep an eye out for. Max and mins, we've got a lot of information here. All right, I have a local minimum of, and I'm going to run out of space here, it looks like, negative 1.61 comma negative 1.38. I have a local and absolute minimum at 1.33 comma negative 6.91. And I'm going to jump down here where I have some more room. I have a local maximum at negative 0.47 comma 0.94. So make sure you're identifying them correctly. All right, continuous, yes, continuous, and it's bounded below. It's like we have a wall below that we don't cross. Extrema, we have an absolute minimum. And that absolute minimum, we already identified it, but let's write it one more time. X intercepts, zero solutions. Here's where I'm going to have to show a little more work. So I'm going to bring that onto the next slide here. Um, increasing, decreasing. Let's take care of that. We actually have three intervals. So increasing, let's talk about that first. I am increasing excuse me, we have four intervals. I am increasing from here to here, if you look at my graph, right? So that's the X value of my first minimum, which was negative 1.61. And I'm increasing all the way to the X value of my maximum, which was negative 0.47. And then I'm also increasing from here to here. 
So that's the x value of my absolute minimum, which was 1.33 to infinity. Decreasing. I am decreasing from here to here. So from negative infinity to the x value of my minimum, which was negative 1.61. And then I'm also decreasing here. So from the x value of my local max, which was negative 0.47, I am decreasing to the x value of my minimum. Notice how I reused all the decimals in this. So if you use it once, you're going to use it again in your increasing, decreasing. All right, let's talk about those x-intercepts, those solutions. Um, so we found three of them clearly. We had the negative 2, the negative 1, and the 2. But we know we need one more. So let's backtrack to finding all zeros. I'm going to use synthetic division to break this down. I have a 1, a 1, a negative 4, a negative 4, and a 0, right? I have a constant here of 0. So I'm going to start with my negative 2. So this is all review. If you feel like you can skip this, please do so. All right, so remainder is 0, constant, x, x squared, x cubed, right? But I don't even need to identify that yet. I don't need the remainder. Let's go again. This time, let's use the negative 1 to break it down. If you need help with this, please make sure you see the previous videos. Remainder is 0. Let's go again, this time with our 2, 0, 0. That's our remainder. And what that means is remainder constant x. So what I have left over is a 1x equals 0. What? You guys, we crossed at the origin. The origin is a zero that we have not accounted for in the past. Zero is a solution. Zero is an x-intercept. We proved it, so we've got the work to prove it. There's other ways you can prove it, as you know. But don't forget about zero. Notice the pattern. If there's no constant, that's your y-intercept. If that's your y-intercept, it's also your x-intercept. So I know this was a long video. Thanks for bearing with me. Make sure that you check Google Classroom to see what the task is. Let me know if you have questions, especially calculator questions. Let's take care of those. But the key thing is finding that max and min and being comfortable identifying key features. We're going to keep working on those key features. Let me know what you need. And until next time, have a good one.